Hello and welcome back to Curiosity Mine and welcome back also to Bush Botany where we explore some of the more unusual plant life that you'll find on the opal fields of Lightning Ridge, New South Wales, Australia. This is not Lightning Ridge by the way. I'm actually in the same place that I was when I recorded the intro to the last Bush Botany video. This is the Barwon River. It was in flood last time. Now it's pretty much back to normal and the landscape has changed quite a bit since we last saw it. In this video Warwick Schofield has taken us out on the opal fields to have a look at something a bit more colourful and a bit more edible. So we've got here the uh, salt bush, the ruby salt bush, ruby because of the red fruits, but around here often the ruby salt bush has yellow fruits or orange. Look at these, quite edible. On a hot day out in the bush the opal miners that are out prospecting, looking for places where they might put their mine, will pick these. And I, they've got a hard seed in the middle, but to get the sweet moisture, it's just dip, 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 between the front teeth, a little nibble, nibble, spit out the seeds. Very edible. Ruby salt bush, and there it is. Look, covered in these little yellow fruits. You can get the red ones, I'll see if I can find you some. So it probably goes without saying, but please don't just eat things in the bush unless you know what you're doing and you know what you're eating because for every sweet fruit, there could just as easily be something that's very, very bad for you. So stay safe. So we'll just pick some of these little yellow fruits off the salt bush. There's hundreds of different species of salt bush. So there's the little yellow fruits that I've picked and I'll just nip, nip, nip those between my front teeth very sweet, beautiful, juicy, quite juicy. Ruby saltbush or Enchilena tomentosa grows across most of Australia, but it really thrives in the semi-arid regions like Lightning Ridge and in the arid and desert areas towards the center of Australia. It's a species that is adapted very specifically to living in dry areas and it doesn't cope so well with increased rainfall. So the environment at Lightning Ridge is perfect for it. The scientific name Enchilena tomentosa means fleshy, cloaked and hairy, which refers to the succulent nature of the leaves of the plant, the way the fruit forms and the tiny silver hairs that are all over the leaves that give it its grey or bluish colouring. If you're curious what the ruby salt bush tastes like, and I know you are because this is a video about something edible in the bush, I found that it tastes a little bit like the peel of an apple. It's not unpleasant, it's quite sweet, it's a little bit tart, and being salt bush it does have a hint of saltiness to it which enhances the flavour. The fruit apparently can also be soaked in water to make a sweet tea which I imagine would be quite nice. Also I haven't tried that, I might do that one day. These are more what you'd expect with a name like, like Ruby. Look at that, like a little red Ruby. A little red Ruby. Oh, and these are getting a bit better size. So I'll get a bit more of a juice out of them. It's been a long lunch break today. Oh, there's a beauty. Nip, nip, nip. Spit out the seed, moistens the mouth, gives you a little bit of sugar and energy. Good stuff, this Ruby salt bush. A few additional things about the ruby saltbush and about saltbush in general. Number one, saltbush is a tremendously drought hardy plant. So they often serve as a source of food for livestock during periods of drought because quite often they're just the only thing that's alive for animals to graze on. Number two, emus. Emus love ruby saltbush and they eat the leaves and the fruit on a regular basis. Emus can travel really long distances so they probably contribute hugely to the spread of saltbush and explain why it's prevalent across so much of arid and semi-arid Australia. The only thing that's stopping it from being common across the entire country is the plant's dislike of the wetter environments like near the coast. Number three, Again, to tie this back to Lightning Ridge, because of their incredible hardiness and the fact that they're really not fussy at all about the soil that they grow in, in fact they prefer drier conditions and salty soil, saltbush were historically used at Lightning Ridge as a component of rehabilitation after opal mining has occurred. So you'll see several kinds of saltbush planted or encouraged on former mining areas because it grows well and it quickly binds the soil and starts 
starts the process of building a nice little ecosystem again. So that's the ruby saltbush, one of several kinds of saltbush that you can find in the Lightning Ridge area. Another recognizable kind is the old man saltbush. And you can check out this video with Barbara from the Lightning Ridge Historical Society discussing its unique method of desalinating the water that it needs to survive and a good part of why it's called saltbush in the first place. Also, if you happen to really like this t-shirt and you think that maybe your life would be substantially enriched by having one of these in it, then please check out the Curiosity Mind shop for shirts and hats and other stuff. The link is in the video description. This video was made with the help of Warwick Schofield with support from Margaret Schofield and Kay Wotherspoon. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to Curiosity Mine on YouTube and following along on all of the usual social media channels. The links are down in the description. And thank you for watching.